Prince. So my name is Jesse Krieger and I'm from San Francisco, California. Uh, there I run a consulting firm called Krieger Consulting Group focused on alternative energy projects and sustainability. And I'm also working with two groups at Stanford, the Sustainability and Energy Project and the Global Climate and Energy Project. One of the focuses there is on building a student union building based on the biologic architecture principles. And what we're going to be talking about here today plays directly into that. So maybe a little bit of background on yourself, Dan, and we should get started. Great. I was quite happy to be introduced in a conference, well actually a conference telecon, with that student group consulting on the new student center at Stanford interested in biologic architecture. And we have groups doing biologic architecture, real professional groups we'll introduce you to later in this tape who are actually using and implementing biologic architecture commercially in four or five different countries. But first, let's talk about the pure principles behind it. Again, since my background is electrical engineering and psychophysiology and measuring life electrically, we have come to some significant insights about what it is that could empower architecture to really serve biology. And it begins with a very simple idea. And that idea is that everything that wishes to be alive needs to store the information that is life electrically. Effectively, it's just a model to say that we have been talking about freshness and life force and chi and orgone and prana, and we've used all those words. But now, having measured the electric field that tells us when an egg is fresh or when an apple is fresh, we know, we can say with some confidence, that all those words, spirit, chi, orgone, prana, shaktipat, freshness, vitality, all of those words are really descriptions of a charge field, a dielectric, capacitive, weak electric field. Simple way to understand this? How do you know if a seed is alive or dead? What a mystery, right? I'm an electrical engineer. I would like to have an answer for electrical en engineers for that question. Well, if you study a seed in the ground and you're trying to find out if it's alive or dead, what you're essentially doing is, suppose you were watching it in a microscope just at the moment it first germinates. What would actually make the seed alive is, if you remember Star Trek now, what's a tractor beam? A tractor beam in Star Trek is when you can change the angle of an approaching spacecraft to suck it in at the angle you want it to arrive. And a seed uses a tractor beam, which is a capacitive field, an electric field, to suck in an approaching water molecule, because therein lies the food, the dissolved mineral. So in effect, quite literally, the seed is alive if it can make a weak electric field to change the angle of an approaching water molecule. So life or death is that electric field. Is that complicated? It's not hairy, it's not difficult. So where did that electric field get in the seed? How did that seed get an electric field strong enough to change the angle of a coming water molecule? The drama is, if, if we look at some pictures, we have beautiful pictures of these things, that what makes the water in a living cell alive is it forms a dodecahedral, which is a five-sided cage called a clathrate cage. And this makes water more electrically conductive. And there's a whole famous Nobel Prize on electronic biology and cancer by Albert Zinn Georgie, Marine Woods Hole Biological Laboratories, showing that it's the order in water inside the cell, the electric order of water, that's the difference between cancer and health. So again and again, life is the electric field compressed so it can radiate, and that electric field is the secret of life. Now that has implications for architecture. So you just mentioned something, compression, mm -hmm, and specifically charge compression. Maybe you could talk a little bit about what that is and then how that plays into um, the way that architecture is structured so that it could effectively compress charge. That is the right question. Thank you. Absolutely. So we're talking about the fact that everything that you consider the memory of who is you is in fact the shape of electric fields that have compressed in your body, in your cells, in your DNA, in your blood. So the ability to have life and survival 
and memory, and even maybe memory after death, depends on whether electric fields are compressed efficiently inside you, inside your blood, inside your DNA, inside your cells. So the trick is compression. <laughs> and if we look at the history of computing, what's that? Computers are the discovery of non-destructive compression. If we look at Einstein, he said, what is the secret of the unified field? His words, non-destructive compression, or simply constructive compression of charge. So could that be the secret to architecture? Dum -da -dum -da. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, compression is about whether information, which is charge, can be squeezed efficiently and constructively so that all the waves of charge that contain all that valuable survival information get compressed efficiently. And it turns out that in pure science, pure physics, pure mathematics, the perfect form of compression is called fractal. Think fraction of the all. Now fractals are not difficult to imagine. Imagine a rose, imagine a pine cone, imagine a fern, imagine an onion. It's something where you could zoom in forever and the inside always looks like the outside. And that's called self-similarity. Self-similarity, thank you, that's our buzzword. Mm -hmm. Yes, so things that are self-similar, where the inside looks like the outside, called fractal, can be compressed perfectly, can be compressed infinitely, can be compressed non-destructively. It's just like there's somebody you love and you want to give them the perfect squeeze. It turns out that the perfect squeeze is fractal. So. There's another secret about perfect squeezing and perfect compression, and guess what that is? What's that? Hint. It's golden. <laughs> the golden mean ratio? The golden mean ratio, yes. <laughs> so it turns out that the golden mean ratio, because this number, 0 0.618033989, is the only ratio that allows a sequence of numbers to both add and multiply. It's called the sacred cut, the golden mean, and it is literally the geometry also of perfect compression. So, all of biology is based almost entirely upon this golden mean ratio. And for anybody that's watching that's not familiar with this, aren't some examples that we can find in the human body, the distance between our feet to the top of our head at 0.618, from the head down to the feet, we find our navel. That's beautiful, yes, and you have 0.618 from your little finger to your bigger knuckle to the bigger. This is all golden mean ratio.